conference that's being held here in Florida in Plantation and we're going to talk about the organizer who of course is Laverne Deer. So Laverne, welcome to the Maxine Dollar Show. Thank you. Thank you Maxine for having me. Oh girl, you look so fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, great. Now talk to us about, first of all, tell our audience about you, just a little bit about your sports background. I got started in soccer because I married into a soccer fanatic home and <laughs> when I realized that I couldn't keep my husband off the soccer field I decided to join him on the soccer field. Great! <laughs> yes. That's so, smart. Yes. That so is absolutely smart. Between my do. son and, and myself and my husband we became a soccer family. It started at a young age I started as a soccer mom and from there I you know being the person that I am cannot sit on the sideline I went and became um, a board member for the one of the youth soccer league in North Miami Beach. Mm -hmm. And from there, I got involved with adult soccer and coaching and managing. And here I am now with a new venture with the Reggae Girls. All right, well, tell me about it. First of all, what's happening today here at the hotel, at the Sheraton Hotel? Well, today is a wonderful day. Today is a day of one whole year of hard work seeing it come to fruition. Mm -hmm. um, last year, I had a group contacted me from Jamaica to try to help the girls after they qualify to the next tournament. Mm -hmm. And from there, I realized that there were some issues because, you know, while we here in the United States were willing to bring them here, there were some financial issues and, and whatever issues that, you know, there they weren't able to come. So from there, being the person that I am and, you know, always refused to stand on the sideline and I knew that I had it in my ability to help. I started to investigate to see why, you know, what was it, why the girls were not getting the support, because they're, they're a talented group of young ladies. Uh, I mean, they are a force to be reckoned with. Uh -huh. So from there, I realized that it is the support that they need, both from the community and from corporate America, corporate Jamaica, anywhere, you know, to be able to help them to get to that next round. Why are they a force of, of, uh, to be reckoned with? What makes them outstanding? What have they accomplished or well, that you measure this? Because, mm -hmm. at, for instance, mm -hmm. as recent as last year, okay. they were the only Caribbean team for the under 17 and the under 20 to have made it to the final round in the CONCACAF. Okay. Now, had they had the ability to train and to prepare, mm -hmm. they could have advanced further. One year, they made it as far as finishing fourth um, behind Canada and the U.S., which are, are two national teams, as you know. And again, usually their first practice is when they show up at the game. Yeah. So they don't have time to prepare. Now, if they have the opportunity to prepare, then they will actually, they will absolutely go to the next level. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. All right, now tonight, is there any uh, of the players that are here? Yes, that will yes. since I started um, announcing about the awareness conference. I've had parents from past players have been contacting me. You know, one parent called me at 7 o'clock in the morning and said, oh, I wanted to start the torch for so long and I just keep putting it off. Now that you've actually got involved, I promise I'm going to do everything in my power to help. So we have uh, Miss Marlo Sweatman. She was actually the under 20 captain um, last last year, and she's here also. Okay. Um, when her dad heard about what we're doing, he decided that he wanted to come full force. So he came from Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and he's here with her tonight. Okay. Now the team members are Jamaican, from Jamaica, or living abroad? It is a mixture. Okay. It's majority Jamaicans living in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. The ones who are here are ones who have gone through college or their parents are Jamaicans. Yes. Okay, very good. All right. Now, I know that you're on a tight schedule, and we want to interview all your guests. I understand the Minister of Tour of Sports is here, so we want to talk to her. So if you have the last minute of 
just telling our audience about you know the future of what you're getting involved in, what they how they can become involved how they can sponsor just provide that information for them well in order for us to, to help we've came up we've started an organization called the Jamaica International Female Football Development mm -hmm. um, through that program we are going to actually start raising funds for the girls we're going to look to develop the girls from a holistic approach um, starting from age 6 to 24 hmm. so six years old from okay. six years old yes so right. this, like the Olympic development yes program. absolutely okay. absolutely mm -hmm. we are going to be doing it starting from here this is an opportunity for us to give back to our country rather than sitting on the sideline and talking about what the country is not doing it's time for us to get involved so I am asking everyone to engage our website will be jiffd.org and you can always find us there or email us at femalefootball at jiffd.org all right well thank you so much Lever. we're gonna have you back in the studio at this the other time Okay. But tonight is your night and I'm going to let you go so that you can, you know, entertain your guests. Thank you so much. All right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Maxine Teller Show. We have a very special guest. Another very special guest here today. <laughs> and of course, this is the Minister of Sports. Pronounce your name for me because I had problems with that. Nita? <laughs> Natalie Nita Headley. Natalie Nita Headley. Mm -hmm. Okay. And she, of course, is the new Minister of Sports. It Does it have another name? Sports well, Act? It's, it's Minister with Responsibility for Sports. So I have other responsibilities in the office of the Prime Minister. It means that the Prime Minister still holds the, the portfolio of Minister of Sports. Um, and, and that is our current Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. Just, just yes. as she is the Minister of Defense, she still holds a portfolio for sports. It's very dear to her heart. But I'm the Minister who has the responsibility to carry on the function of the sport. Right. And you're here today in Florida, in yes. Plantation. Absolutely. And tell us, you know, the participation and your involvement with the reggae girls. It, is, it comes under your portfolio. Right? portfolio per se. Right. I'm happy to be here. Mm -hmm. um, I responded to an invitation from the diaspora group um, headed by Laverne in her capacity as chairman for this alumni association um, female football awareness trust. Um, and I was very happy to respond because we have been striving to diversify the number of sports, sporting disciplines that Jamaica will be involved in over the next couple of years. Um, so we've mastered some, we've not been doing so well at some, we've not give, given sufficient focus to some. Hold a, hold a minute, <laughs> what do you mean? You, you have something to be very proud no, of. No, we have a lot to be proud of. We yes. have a lot to be proud of. Yeah. Um, we are, we, and if you want me to go there, but I, I can. You can, I, and I, I, I charge I'm, you to. I'm pleased, yeah. I'm pleased, I, yeah. I'm pleased to do so, yeah. um, and to remind all of your viewers <laughs> that we are the sporting, sprinting capital of the world. Right. We are, yes. we currently have the fastest man in the, and on the, the planet, woman on the planet. On the planet, yeah. we have the world featherweight boxer winning his first featherweight WBA tag on Kingston soil. In um, Nicholas Axman Walters, we won Paralympic gold uh -huh. last year. We got our greatest medal all at the Olympic Games. People from all over the world wanted to know what it is in, that we were doing in Jamaica that made us so fabulous and what it yes, is that we what is so it? dominant. <laughs> Tell me what oh. it is because everybody's asking me that. We had that question today. Yeah. What? One girl said, it's the jerk chicken. <laughs> <laughs> some people say it's a yeah, right? And some people say it's um, a yeah, right. But the only difference is yeah. some of our people are not exposed to that much yam. Um, <laughs> Shelly is from Waterhouse, right? <laughs> <laughs> How much yam can so she that have? Much, that much yam she yeah. would have had. Would she um, have the jerk time, chicken? But she would have had a jerk chicken. Yeah. But I, I think neither. Uh -huh. um, we're talented people. And for whatever reason or however it came about, we have been blessed. Um, not only in our sports, but certainly in our music, in our craft, mm -hmm. in our abilities, to be good or bad. Um, Both more, more, good more, more good than bad. More good than bad. But you know, but they emphasize excellent. and magnify sometimes, to that. Sometimes. You know, yeah. But an, an event like this one um, shows that within the diaspora, there are Jamaicans who continue to be concerned even after they would have left Jamaica for the continued growth and development of the country. 
um, it is persons like these, if, um, groups like these that we want to continue to have partnerships with um, and to ensure that over time we continue to get stakeholders who want to share in that partnership to develop sports in order to greater place in Jamaica. We want to host a Diamond League in Jamaica. We certainly believe we have the stars. Um, a Diamond League? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why not? Okay. Um, we, we have all of what it takes to host the Diamond League. I believe there's a lot more that would need to be done, but I believe we have the foundations of what is going to be required to host the Diamond League. Um, we, we continue to seek partnership. Sports for Jamaica is not just about recreation and competition anymore. Mm -hmm. It's about um, economic development, career sure. development mm -hmm. for people, mm -hmm. um, and a path that um, more young people can see as something they could choose from school, yeah? choose to be a facilities manager, choose to be a coach, or umpire, referee, um, someone who's going to be a sports manager. Somebody has to manage your same votes money. Uh, yes, a sports so, caster. A sports caster. Mm -hmm. um, but that there are real opportunities in sports and that we need to be seeking to maximize the opportunities that can be derived from, from the sport and so forth. Now getting back to the reggae girls. Yes. All right. Tell yes. me a little bit more about reggae girls because they exist. Yes, yes they exist. Like, when they Laverne exist. called me, I was like, "Bring it, girls!" <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. But and this is the awareness conference. Anyway. This is the awareness conference, mm -hmm. and I can tell you, there are quite a quite a number of persons, not only here mm -hmm. in in the diaspora, but also in Jamaica, who are not fully aware mm -hmm. of their presence, their ability, um, mm -hmm. what they have achieved so far, mm -hmm. and um, their potential to achieve even greater. And I believe a conference of this kind, a thrust of this kind, a campaign of this nature, is going to allow for Jamaicans here and abroad, um, local and abroad, to be able to understand the capacity of our Jamaicans to be involved in whatever it is we choose to be involved in. Football for boys has been our focus. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're only 50 years old as an independent nation, but our football has been around for a very long time. Very for males, well yes. But for females, I think the national program only started in 1998. Mm -hmm. And so it will take time to grow. But an awareness conference of this nature, I believe, is going to make all the difference in the world. Well, listen, I think we are out of time. Okay. And I would love for you to come back when you come back to this part of the country. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I get the time. Know. Sports is a very demanding area. You know? I, I know, I know. Yes. And just you talking about all these <laughs> other participating sports that yeah. I wasn't even aware yes. that you guys had yeah. really. By accept. 2016, we would want to see Jamaica mm -hmm. being involved in, uh, in a greater way in or swimming should be stepped up, should be in cycling in the Olympics. We want to be table tennis, we want to see ourselves. And, all right, let me yeah, ask you a question. Yes. You're saying, you're listing all these sports. I don't right. mean to cut you off, but in listing these sports, what is Jamaica doing to develop those sports financially? I think there's, there's a greater focus. Yeah. Um, part of what used to happen, we have always been given um, subsidy mm -hmm. to associations representing these sporting disciplines. I think what has happened over time, though, is that there hasn't really been a focus um, to be able to say, okay, we're choosing five disciplines mm -hmm. for the next Olympics, and let's focus on these five. Okay. Um, and that's what we're doing now in you know, a okay. vision 2016, which is for real 2016. 16, right? Okay. To see how best we can um, do better mm -hmm. at some other areas. Um, certainly, track is doing well. Field is not doing so well. Right. So the other high jump, and long and jump, jump and all, yeah. right? Long but distance and middle distance running. Mm -hmm. So. We, we are looking at exploring our bilateral partnerships with countries that do well in these other sports to see how best we can exchange best practices and okay. you send your athletes and we export our coaches to teach you our people how to run faster. You send yours to teach us how to run longer distances. Okay, sounds good. Yes, right. absolutely. Okay. But we're Jamaicans, we can do anything we want to do. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you. My pleasure. Alright. Stay tuned. We're gonna be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Maxine Teller Show. We are here in Plantation, of course, at the Reggae Girls Awareness Conference. And we have a godfather of soccer here with us on the set. But I'm going to let him do all the talking because, listen, I'll be blown.
My husband played for him. Um, he's he's a mega superstar from Jamaica. So we're just going to introduce him. I'm going to let you hear what he has done when he started the football team Santos. You remember Santos? So. Welcome to the set, Mr. Chung. Winston. Winston. Thank you. You're so handsome. You're a handsome gentleman. <laughs> I think you left your glass. <laughs> well, welcome to South Florida. Thank you. And welcome to this event and to the show. Thanks. I know you have a wealth of information to share with us and with the audience. And I'm just going to ask you to glance now and again and telling them some of the things that you're about to tell us. We have five minutes in this interview. <laughs> Only five. But we're going to do something bigger on a bigger scale. Oh, yes, we will have we to. We will have, have to do have that. To. But today, talking about the reggae girls, tell me a little bit about yourself. I know there's a lot, but just just a tiny synopsis. Just a man who loved the game mm -hmm. and has been very fortunate to have had some fantastic players. And I've done fairly well in Jamaica and in the Caribbean. Um, last year, in um, last year, I had the honor of being presented with FIFA highest honor, the Order of Merit. The, um, the, the, I was very, very humbled mm -hmm. when they flew me to Budapest yeah. along with Barbara to receive it. But let us go closer to hear what you're talking about. Right, today. 1963, certain class of players, people I should say, including myself, were not privy to join a club because I grew up in Raytown in the inner cities. And in yesteryears, you didn't have football clubs. It was cricket club with a football team. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the sons of gentry ensure that people like myself could not get in because you had to fill application forms. And when they saw where you came from, it definitely you couldn't make it so. You didn't have the right zip code. No, you didn't have the right zip code. Okay. Period. Right. Um, in 1963, I thought that this was not right. And I started Doncaster Rovers. Mm -hmm. And then we had internal struggle. And of course, I left and I formed Santos. And um, people thought that clubs like those could not survive because one, one of my best players, we used to call them stick men. <laughs> when we went on the bus to go to the game, I have to let him sit beside me because he used to work everybody pocket before we reached the game. <laughs> so those were the type of shooters the most volatile part of Kingston, mm. or where my kids came from. Mm. 1964, the first time a woman football team was formed, was on the Santos Football Club. And then when I went home in 1992, 93, to take the helm in Jamaica football, again, I had problem with the administrators. Mm. Because, um, it doesn't matter to me about position, but there, there is no right way to do the wrong thing. Right. right. And I believe in truth and right. Truth and right? Truth, oh, truth, truth and, and right. right. Okay. Because that's how I grew up. Okay. okay. Because the elders in my community would let you know that they can't do certain things. Mm -hmm. So when I went home, this reggae girl thing we're talking about, I was the man that pushed it. Ellen Walker Brown, who is here, okay. was one of my students. Okay. And we didn't have anywhere to put these girls. We had to beg money to put them into some small places and places where they could cook. Mm. And it, it, it hurt to see that these kids could have been my children and yet the association at the time did not think it was important to um, invest into it. We went to the World Championships the first time, the qualification rounds in Haiti. And I remember one night I went to beg money for the kids to have pocket money. 
and um, one of my coaches had his um, his car left around Stadium East, mm -hmm. and he said he's not going for the car because he saw some gunmen, and I went around there. I said that's stupidness. We are we are sportsmen, mm -hmm. and when we went around there, five of them stick me up and had me on the ground, and um, they burst my chain, and I said to them, the money that I have is for the little girls that are going on a trip tomorrow to Haiti. Mm -hmm. Well, they took the money. Mm -hmm. And of course, the underworld went for them. Mm -hmm. And I won't discuss what really happened. Okay, okay, we won't. No, mm -hmm. but um, when um, Laverne called me mm -hmm. and told me, I said, look, one of the things I think you should do, because I got a lot of support from her, try to find the Prime Minister have her be patron for this. It is just fitting as Prime Minister of the country. But um, I support this and I, I hope to God that finance will come in. Because in the final analysis, that's what it, it, that's it, what it breaks it down to. to yeah. And um, I don't think, I don't know, you know, I have long to want to go home. I'm coming home. <laughs> You're coming home. Yes, I'm, I'm tired. I've lived out in the country too long. Okay. You see, my work just start. I have sent umpteens of kids to some of the best universities and some of the best prep schools in this country. Okay. But I don't sing these songs. All right. We're going to sing them on another tour. We will. We will. We will. All we right. Will. We're almost out of time. Uh, yeah, my, uh, I wish, I wish Laverne and I wish the girls and I wish Jamaica mm -hmm. to all stretch their hands out, embrace them. Yes. Because um, what is it that they have that we don't have? It's just the will. It's just the will why we cannot do well. You mm -hmm. Saint Bolt has shown us. Yes. The track and field has shown us. Mm -hmm. Nineteen thirty. Uruguay had 1.6 million people and won the world championship twice. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't tell you one athlete that went to the Olympics that came from Uruguay. And at that time, we had Herb McKinley, we had George Headley, mm -hmm. we had Monsignor Gladstone Wilson, one of the five most learned men in the world, three PhDs before he was 30 mm -hmm. and spoke 15 languages. But we do not know how great we are as a people. Very good. And I hope to God that we Jamaicans will start embracing and really look within ourselves. 1945, when the Allied forces were under, were bogged down in, England, in, in Normandy, it was Jamaica Claude Mackey's poem that Churchill read yes, to yes. rally the Allied forces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Winston, you you saying so much. We this show is not long enough yeah, for us to yeah, do this uh, because you're touching on some things that I really want to get into. But you know, we have a short time. Yes. Right now. Yes. But we have a better time. No, we have, we have a great time. A great time. Great time. Doing some more of this. I really want to because. Yes. I have researched from 1883, the first time a team was formed in Jamaica. How many people know of that um, we went on a West Indies team and um, Alexander should have captained both the West Indies cricket and football team, but he had exams in, um, in Cambridge, mm. so he couldn't leave England. Who knew that? Lindy De La Plena playing in England mm -hmm. at, at Will Middlesbrough. And at the same time, we had Gilly Heron playing for Celtic in Scotland. Mm -hmm. How many people know of Gilly Heron? Mm -hmm. Well, all of this we need to talk about. All right. Well, then, we're going to hold that right there. Yes. Thank you for being on the Maxine Talk My Show. My pleasure. And don't go anywhere just now. <laughs> Stay tuned. We're going to be right back. Welcome back. We are, of course, in Plantation in South Florida. And we're talking about the reggae girls 
I'm sure you're unaware of the Reggae Girls, but we are making you aware of the Reggae Girls. And we have Coach, I'm gonna let him talk about himself, but he is of course an outstanding Jamaican citizen who participates in the sports arena for many, many years. I've known him since I was a kid. <laughs> and um, he coached and worked with my husband, so we're gonna talk more about that. But we're here about the Reggae Girls. So I'll let Mr. Vin Blaine introduce himself. Welcome, Vin. That's me. You. You're quite welcome. It's good to have you. It's good to see you. Yeah, all these years. All know. these years. Yes. You follow me. You don't know in person. That's good. Yes. For once more. All right. Well, now you've met me and, and remember who I am now. <laughs> <laughs> finally. 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 All right. Let's tell our audience about what you do in Jamaica. You're one of the top. Well, well, I'm the actually the technical coordinator for uh, the women's program in Jamaica, and um, I'm in, I'm in, in my duties are all the, the teams on the 17s, the on the 20s, and the um, senior team. Okay. And um, it's, I've been doing that for well, I had two stints. I started in 2005, resigned in 2008, and was asked back. Um, at the end of 2008. Did you coach the Jamaica Reggae Boys? No, no. no. I, co I just coached the girls. Just the girls? Okay. You know, and um, took them to qualify them for the Pan American Games. Mm -hmm. you know, the only, only girls team ever done that in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then I, I, I managed the Reggae Boys in between the, the time I resigned. Okay. I then managed the Reggae Boys and they, they, um, the Federation asked me to come and take back the, um, the women's program. So I've been doing that from then till now. You know, I'm here in South Florida uh, because of an initiative by the Vendere, you right. know, to sort of garner support for the girls, right. which is uh, which has been lacking over the years. Okay. We are we have a very competitive bunch of young ladies, but the, the support base is not there. So this is welcome a welcome gesture by by, by Lebanon and for uh, GIFT. GIFT. Okay. All right. That's yes, very good. Well, uh, we had Laverne on earlier, mm -hmm. who talked more about what uh, what was happening in terms of funding, right. and that the reggae boys would get the funding, and whatever was left over was given to the <laughs> girls. <laughs> and I'm saying, oh my God, that really sounds, you know. Yeah. But being here, you, you said Garner um, support. Who are you talking with? And you know, as the coach for them now, what is it that you see that you are able to get for them at this time? And what is it that they really need? Well, well, the girls, actually what happened? Mm -hmm. The area we are lacking is um, we have uh, a tournament. Yeah. We don't get enough games, practice games. Actually, when we play our first game in a tournament, that's, mm -hmm. that is actually our first practice game. Well, who do they practice with? Do they, they, you have another girl team that they can No, well, we, we, we want to travel. Uh -huh. Our opponents that are keeping us away from the World Cup. Okay. The USA, Canada, Mexico. That's the, those are the top three in CONCACAF. Okay. We are, we, we are preparing our fourth place players, um, uh, place with, with, with all those, with all three. Okay. Uh, to compete with a team, with teams like those, you have to have some practice games. Okay. The girls travel, oftentimes the girls travel for the first time. Mm. So they're in all of the place in the first place right. and forget about the football. Mm. And as they walk into the stadium, they're looking around in the stadium. Yeah. And they're playing against girls who, are, who have had maybe uh, 20 practice games under their belt. Not to mention the, 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 the time spent in, school, in, in the club football here yes. in the US yeah. and um, high school football. Mm -hmm. So all in all, a, a young lady from Canada or, or um, USA or maybe Mexico, mm -hmm. we'll play 100 games a year, between okay. 70 and 100 games a year. Mm -hmm. Our Jamaican girls probably play 15 that much. Okay. You know? so, so they're not getting a good wide uh, the exposure experience. and experience is not yeah. there because yeah. if you're gonna if you're gonna swim, mm -hmm. you've got to. And, you have, and, and you, you have to swim against the best. Yes. Because you never know where you, you can where you engage are. yourself. Yeah. Right? So we are we were we are definitely lacking in that area. So what this will allow us to do now, this, this support will, what we are looking um, forward to is to have our, our camps in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, because we want to play against the same type of, the characteristics of the players that we want to play against are the USA's and the Canada's, mm -hmm. not, not, not um, Brazil. I don't want to go to Brazil. You know, the boys can go to Brazil, but the girls who we have to uh, concentrate on are, the, are the, um, the teams like Canada and the USA. 
Africa, and, and so we have to play against girls who are who, the culture is, is, is the same. So it doesn't make sense we go up play against a Brazil who play a different style and we're going to meet up in, in, the, uh, in the first round. Mm -hmm. After we make it to the World Cup, then we can always go play the Brazils and the, and the, and the Argentinians and that, that okay. those type of teams. But how hard is it for you to get these games, these practice games? Is it funding you're saying that's holding you back? Definitely, definitely funding. All right. Because it, it, and if you're alone, Mm -hmm. From Jamaica, uh, coming out of Jamaica is probably like two million dollars, mm -hmm. and then you, you have to talk about Hotel. hotels, and um, accommodation, and, and food, okay. and, uh, and transportation. Right. So that is a big chunk right there. And with, with Jamaica having uh, about I think seven programs, yeah. the girls are at the bottom of that. At the bottom of the bar, yeah. 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 So yeah. they don't get the funding. No, and uh, I mean, 2006, mm -hmm. we went to um, to, to Mexico. At the under 20 level, we had a, the, the, the average age of that team was 17, mm -hmm. and we, we we lost out to Mexico in the playoffs, mm -hmm. right? And um, that team was an exceptional team, right. but uh, the exposure was not there for them. With a little bit of experience, those girls would have made it. Interestingly to note that 19 of those girls, yes. because of the exposure in that tournament, got scholarships to colleges. Okay. The only girl that did not get a scholarship, she had a problem with immigration. Her paper, her documents were important, correct. Okay. But all of those girls, so and they've gone on to um, gotten their four year um, degree and they're productive. Okay. So it so it's benefits not just the football, mm -hmm. but the exposure within this um, with playing for Jamaica and getting to an international level mm -hmm. does a world of good for the girls and their families. Okay. Now, when you're here getting awareness, now what are you looking for? Are you looking for corporate sponsors? Are you looking for families to house them? Because sometimes if you really don't have the money yeah. to do that, you can try some alternative right. as looking for a family that will put up two of the girls while they're here, right. you know, and feed them. Have you done that? Is that something you want? We have reached out in that direction yeah. already, yeah. You know, prior to, to this happening. Right. Uh, because we're looking at any way we can. Any way you can, that is to, possible. To get, yeah, right. to get a support. Right. Uh, Ideally, we would love to be at, in one location, mm -hmm. but you know, um, beggars are no choosers, as you know. So if, if, if we have to put four girls here, four girls here, as long as we, are, we, we have control of where they are, mm -hmm. and we know they're, they're with a good family, mm -hmm. it, it, it doesn't matter. But, but we, Vin, really, really, yeah. Yeah, you, you used to live here, mm -hmm. and um, I'm sure you still have friends and connections here, right, right. that you could, within a particular city, or a neighboring city, get a family of 10 families mm -hmm. or five families that will put up two or three, you know, three girls yes, that um, that can happen almost immediately. Yeah, that, that's, that's an option. That's an yeah. option. But the, what we are, what we are leaving this uh, mm -hmm. JD, uh, is a GIF D. GIF D. Yeah, I'm seeing it. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what we're going to be doing is allowing them mm -hmm. to guide the process. Right them who? The, 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 the Jamaica Jeff International did? Okay. Yeah, Jeff, okay. Football Development. Okay. Okay. Um, we want to, uh, want to give them the opportunity to, to um, make the arrangements for us. Because mm -hmm. we, are, we are based in Jamaica. Right. So the going work here, Leverand there and our, and our group will we'll take, we'll take care of that for us. And we're hoping that um, we, we have seen it, we have seen it in the light of the end of the tunnel, really. Because oh. we have seen the, 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 all the tournaments full. Mm -hmm. And I can see people, the mayor, mayors are there, and you know, mm -hmm. the government representatives are there. Yeah. And I think it will go far away in, in assisting us to raise the, the kind of funds that we want. We have um, Captain Burrell here. Right. We have uh, Gillian Walker, but we have the uh, chairperson of the football in Jamaica. She's here also. Okay. So the, 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 um, I want to say that the, some of the main stakeholders of the game mm -hmm. are here tonight. and. Looking forward to a bright future for the girls. Mm -hmm. okay. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. Well, we are at the end of this little section, and um, you've provided a good amount of information for mm -hmm. us. But whatever we can do, we would really love to help support that in whatever way we can. Yeah. Coming from a football family, yeah, my definitely. husband, my son, my yeah. brother, everybody. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and this exposure with us here, and thank yeah. you for having me and uh, giving us the exposure. Also. All right. Well, thank you for Thanks being so on the show. And nice to see you again. Good to see you again also, <laughs> right. don't move. Stay tuned, we'll be right back.
In 2008, one of the top women's soccer teams in the Caribbean region was disbanded due to lack of funding. Now the reggae girls have returned from playing all around the world to represent their home country of Jamaica. Their dream is to play for the Jamaican team at the 2015 Women's World Cup. But without proper funding to cover their training, that dream could end real soon. was cancelled in 2008 I was really disappointed it was devastating for us because we represent um, our, our nation from back then oh I felt when the team was cancelled I was a bit sad and a bit traumatized because you know growing up that's like everyone's every female dream I grew up watching my dad and my brothers play football and when I was asked to assist with the Jamaica reggae girls it, it was it was a no-brainer I've been playing for my national team since I was 15 years old. So it's, it's here, you know, it's in the heart. It's something I love. And to qualify for the World Cup is something I've always dreamed to do. These girls want to represent our country, but they don't have the proper funding. It's important for us to get support because without finance and resources, we can't really do much. We need proper equipment, we need to train. For the Bob Marley Foundation to come on board with us, is a very big thing because it helps to put us out there, put our faces out there as individuals. The reggae girls have had difficulty getting support. Traditionally, many people still see soccer as a men's sport. And I think the problem, especially in Jamaica, is that the sponsors, some sponsors at least, don't believe that girls should play football. Welcome back to the Maxine Teller Show. Our additional guest today on the show, talking about the Reggae Girls soccer team, the awareness conference here in South Florida. We have another Jamaican icon who is gracing us with his presence here. He is, of course, the president of the Jamaica Soccer Federation. Well, we call it football. It's, uh, Foot in the United States, you say soccer. Yeah. In Jamaica, we you say football. football. <laughs> so you understand that? Football. Now, welcome to the set. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome, Captain. May I call you Captain? Captain Burrell? As you, as you feel. <laughs> okay, Captain Burrell is his name. Um, but he's going to tell you a little bit more about himself, and then we're going to get into the information about the women's soccer team, the reggae girls matching the reggae boys. Captain, yes. let's tell me a little bit about your background. I know you went to school with my husband in Clarendon. Well, I went to the college, as they say. Oh, uh, the college? College. The college. Clarendon College, of course. Clarendon. Okay. <laughs> All right. And yeah. uh, after leaving uh, Clarendon College, uh, went straight into the Jamaica Defense Force. Okay. And uh, okay, received Captain. training. <laughs> I've received training overseas, uh, mm -hmm. Canada, England, United States, you know, and uh, it's a very broad background there. Yes, well, I think in, in the I have, army, definitely. I have to say that um, I was privileged mm -hmm. to have received, uh, and I'm now convinced, mm -hmm. the best military training in the world, which is which is the United States. Where? Of course, England? Jamaica, England, Canada, United States. So it's a combination, of course. Okay, so. <laughs> very good. Well, I, with that, you know, you have my utmost respect. Thank you. Because I know you are a disciplined person. You bring a whole lot to the table, and your focus, all of that, is training from all these military: England, Canada, the U.S., and Jamaica itself. So tell us now. Um, you're here today at this conference yes. that was put on by Laverne Deer. Tell us more about your involvement with this and how you plan to help them. Okay, well, currently um, I am the president of the Jamaica Football Federation. And I have been doing this job for, uh, I'm in my second decade. And 20 years? Well, getting there. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's been a real pleasure. You know, and the fact that I had the opportunity to oversee the transition of, you could say, in the earlier years, recreational football, okay. moving into the 
semi-pro and now having several of our players play their trade in the overseas uh, professional clubs in England, some are in the United States, others are in the Scandinavian countries, and we now have players as far as Vietnam. Jamaica? Of course, we have players in Turkey. What? And I'm not talking about the Vietnam War, I'm talking right. about having... <laughs> 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 okay. Oh yes. Yeah. So um, it's 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 really for me a tremendous honor yes. to have been uh, you know tasked with this mantle of being the president of the Jamaica Football Federation. And, uh, well, I'm sure you're fitting for this task, and you have succeeded at these tasks. Well, I tell you, and I tell you a little story quickly. Mm -hmm. When I took over the mantle in 1993, the latter part of 93 into 94, mm -hmm. one of my tasks was to improve the general development of football in Jamaica. Yes. Jamaica had never qualified for a major competition because somehow we never thought that that was ever possible. And in those days, you found out that Jamaicans were cheering for Brazil Mm -hmm. England, mm -hmm. Argentina, mm -hmm. and then having taken off, as I said to myself, why can't we reach the point where we cheer for our own country? And so I went into Brazil, mm -hmm. contracted a coach, Rene Simois, Professor Rene Simois, brought him into Jamaica with the help of uh, the Prime Minister at the time, P.J. Patterson, and we worked together very hard for a couple of years qualified for the World Cup and since then mm -hmm. I have to say that uh, the whole business of football in Jamaica has not been the same. It has in fact taken I would say 10 leaps mm -hmm. ahead and currently when I see the number of players that we have in the leagues across the world earning some real big bucks. Mm -hmm. We had one of our players earning 35,000 pounds Per week, per week, playing in England, mm -hmm. and that to me is is really satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And knowing that we have always enjoyed watching the sport, and every Jamaican wants to see a Jamaican in the higher echelon, yes. and realizing now that that has become a reality is certainly satisfying. You now, my task here today is to, as a president, be a part of this. Uh, this new initiative for, for women. Women's football in Jamaica has not, in so far as I'm concerned, I don't think that we have yet realized our true potentials where the development of women's football is concerned. Okay. And this has been so because of a lack of resources. We do not have the funding. We simply don't have the funding. I'm oh. hearing a lot of that tonight. Yeah. And I tell you, yeah. we have to compete against United States, mm -hmm. Mexico, Canada, mm -hmm. Costa Rica. And when you look at the economies in those countries, need I say, mm -hmm. we are way at the back of the line. Mm -hmm. However, with the tremendous talent that we possess, you know, within our young women, once we are able to, to garner at least even a small amount of funding, I am sure that before long you will see these girls emerge and will be able to qualify for the World Cup Finals. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I have to commend, you know, Laverne from this part of the diaspora and the whole diaspora, the Jamaican diaspora in this part of South Florida, yes. who have come together and have, in fact, come up with this initiative to raise funds and to bring more awareness mm -hmm. to the people in this part and hopefully they will help to contribute some amount of much needed funding mm -hmm. which we'll be able to you know use wisely to help our women to realize their dreams of qualifying for the World Cup Finals. Mm -hmm. Once they qualify for the World Cup Finals mm -hmm. Believe me, it, it will become... It's over. It's all it's over. It's over. It will yeah. become a fixture. Yeah. <laughs> they will always be qualified, but yeah. the first time, yeah. it's important. Yes. yes, very good, very good, excellent. Um, I, I do get a lot of 
need funding, need money to do this. Yes. And um, as I was talking with um, Vin Blaine earlier, um, it's not just the funding that's needed, but for them to get a lot more practice matches oversee with higher uh, competition, competitive players and in that, other countries, and not just yours. And this is why yeah. I'm saying to you, yeah. funding is it's, needed in order to be able to send these teams yes. to participate. One of the difficulties is, in the case of Central America, for example, okay. Honduras is near to Costa Rica, is near to Panama, they can all travel. It's close proximity. Right. When you have to travel from Jamaica to Central America, North America, or the Caribbean, mm -hmm. the cost is simply phenomenal. Right. And yeah. therefore, unless you have and should I say adequate amount of funding, right. you're not going to be able to afford these trips. Mm -hmm. And so our girls are not going to be able to attend the training camps and to play the practice games okay. that they ought to. Mm -hmm. Whilst they are not doing that, US is doing that, Canada is doing that, Mexico is doing that, and so on. So we are affected by the lack of funding which will enable us okay. to be able to play these games and to you know, become more proficient in, in, in our skills. All right. What about the Jamaican government? Can they stand that expense of um, funding those ladies? We know that they do all this other funding in the sports arena, but in terms of, you know, you're saying a good story and I'm hearing the story and loving the story mm -hmm. that, you know, we need to get them trained and we need money to do all of this so that they can become and reach the potential, mm -hmm. their potential. Does the government know that they have that potential so they should invest <coughs> in these young people? I'm very happy that you raised this point. I have to commend the Jamaican government because Michael Manley, years ago, had a brilliant dream and that developed into something which I think is great. He actually decided that from the winnings of the lotto mm -hmm. and the other gaming um, initiatives that they have in Jamaica, mm -hmm. that a portion percentage of each of the, from everybody's winnings mm -hmm. would go towards the development of sports. So all of this funding is, 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 is channeled into uh, an organization which is called Chase. Chase you know, then allocates a percentage mm -hmm. to the Sports Development Foundation. The Sports Development Foundation in turn gives each of the sporting disciplines a monthly subvention. Okay. But when you look at the number of sporting Sports. disciplines in Jamaica, mm -hmm. how much can you expect to get? I mean, you know. yeah. But the point I'm trying to make is that if these girls are uh, so talented, more <coughs> talented, is it? Does the funding depend on what? What makes the girls get more or less and than again, the boys? I am very happy or, that you raised this. Yes. Football, uh -huh. and listen carefully, mm -hmm. unlike any other sport in Jamaica, football has to administer to nine, all of nine national teams. Okay. All of these nine teams participate in World Cup qualifiers at the various levels. Mm -hmm. When you have nine teams, then certainly yes. it is going to, um, the pie is going to get smaller when you have to divide for so many teams, mm -hmm. amongst so many teams. That's true. So it is very, very difficult to expect that funding to suffice and to be enough to take care of all these training camps. And so I tell you, mm -hmm. in the case of the senior reggae boys, the game we just played in Mexico, mm -hmm. the cost of that was a mere twenty-eight million dollars for one game. Mm -hmm. Twenty-eight million dollars was expended to get the fellows out of London mm -hmm. and from other parts of Europe, from the Scandinavian countries, from the USA, mm -hmm. to get them in Mexico to, to uh, take care of the hotel accommodation, meals, transportation, and so on. Mm -hmm. So it's and a that's very- that's solely from the Jamaican government? Luckily. Okay. From, this, from the funding that I'm talking about. about. Right. Now, we have nine teams. Mm -hmm. Think of it. And if we are to look after each of the nine teams, properly you see the budget would be huge mm -hmm. and that funding would never be able to because if they did 
Athletics would not get anything. Cricket would not get anything. The netballers would not get anything. The, the hockey people would not get anything. So Jamie we have to. Hockey? Oh yes. Really? Oh yes. In I the, in the ice hockey, they're doing well. In fact, I think. Really? I think we earned a medal. Really? Uh, we're, we are an amazing people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, I know. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's. We will have to continue to seek assistance from outside, yes. and um, because when Jamaica does well, you know, the people in the diaspora they to enjoy. Yes. I mean, we're not looking for handouts, but we're saying, please try and give a little because when you consider what the Jamaican dollar is at now, yes. in terms of a conversion rate, mm. it is almost ninety-five to one it's today. Going to ninety-five? Uh, Whoa! Isn't that That's Frightening. Yes. It is awfully frightening. And therefore, you see how important it is when we get some support yes. from the diaspora. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if from the South Florida group mm -hmm. we're able to get even a half a million US to help with the Cena Reggae Boys? Well I hope you'll get it. My word, I'm looking forward to that. I, I hope you'll get that. Really looking forward. Yes. Well I think we're in of our timing. Oh, it's such a pity. I know, but you know what? Um, we, we're going to do some more with you guys because we're going to follow follow what you're doing. So you'll have a better opportunity to um, spend more time on the program. Well, it's We have to cover everybody today while you're in America. Okay, well, it's it's yes. been wonderful. And I uh, really want to thank you all for having taken this, um, you know, initiative to invite our administrators and, 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 and some players yeah. and in an effort to you know Give raise, awareness. To raise, raise awareness. so much needed funding and also the awareness. Mm -hmm. Because awareness. once there's the awareness then I think everything will fall in place. But I must thank all of you. Yes. Very happy <laughs> for that. <laughs> well I thank you and I want folks to know that this Mr. Burrell has the captain's bakery. So when you go to Jamaica, I understand you have another one where? Well, in, uh, in the Cayman? There, there are. There are? There are I like nine, that. Nine bakers the in verb. Jamaica. And the Grand nine Cayman. baker in Jamaica? Oh, yes. Uh, really? I think most of the um, very, very um, popular um, parish capitals Montego Bay, Mandeville, Ultra Rios, Portmore, Kingston, <laughs> and in Grand Cayman. And in Grand Cayman. Yeah. I have the largest bakery in Grand Cayman. Really? Oh, yes. Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm very proud. I'm very Thank you. proud. Thank you. I go, when I go to Jamaica, go to the one in, is that Crossroads? Yeah, man. That's the one, yes. But now that I know your husband, he was a great footballer. You know? Yes. Ah, oh, he had some. Yes, I know. Big touch. Big, big Keith touch. Keith Tuller. Yeah. Yeah. I've been... An yeah. icon. An icon. He's also an icon. Jamaican yes. icon. But oh, yeah. he's very subdued, as you know. He doesn't... He's very quiet under the cover. But I like that. Under the cover. Under the cover. <laughs> <Yes>. Uh oh. <laughs> 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 Thank you for watching. <laughs>